Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This question comes from Bob, KC1MOF. His question is, I have watched a large number of your videos, as well as the streaming YouTube. I have a Hustler B, uh, let's see, 4BTV, it's a vertical, and I'm finishing an MFJ 1846 hex beam. That's actually a pretty good sized project. That's, that's a big antenna. How close can I place these antennas in my backyard? Thanks, N73. Okay, let's make a couple assumptions. Let me make this uh, uh, screen a little bit bigger here. Okay, let us assume that you've got your hex beam, which goes up like this and uh, has all sorts of wires connected all over everywhere. Okay, and then you've got a Hustler BTV. Now, the hex beam is horizontal polarization. Okay, the plane waves are parallel to the ground. The vertical has vertical polarization so the waves are parallel to the antenna. In theory, these two are kind of orthogonal to each other. In practice, um, there's something called the near field. A near field is the part of the electromagnetic field that's very near the antenna, hence the name. In that, you view each little piece of the antenna as separate little radiators, and they're all throwing energy out into this cauldron right here near the antenna. And as you get further away, they start to sort themselves into what's called the far field. The far field is usually oh, a couple wavelengths away from the antenna, um, depending on gain and lots of other factors. In the near field, the waves have not sorted themselves out yet. If you were trying to tell by just looking at an antenna right here, whether it's vertically polarized, horizontally polarized, circularly polarized, or what, you wouldn't be able to because it's still sorting itself out. If you get into the far field, that's where it's already sorted itself out. Now, in most <clears throat> lots, uh, in uh, where you would build, you're not going to get these far enough away for them both to be in the far field. So they will interact with each other. Okay, if they were far enough away to be in like my hex beam is maybe 40 feet from my vertical okay that's kind of on the hairy edge of getting into the far field uh, but not really you're going to have this antenna which resonates on 20 meters and this antenna transmitting on 20 meters will the two interact to cause a change in the um, pattern, cause a change in the, in the radiation pattern in the antenna? The answer is yes, it will. The further you have them apart, the less it will do that. Now the hex beam has about a 90 degree beam width. It's not quite that high, but it's like this. This is looking down on it. So your beam width actually would be about 60 degrees, okay? So it might distort this a little bit, probably not much. Now I am assuming, this is a very important assumption, that you either transmit and receive on this one, or you transmit and receive on this one, or if you wanted to, transmit on this one, receive on this one, depending on what your radio will do, but that you will never have a receiver 
connected to this actually receiving while this one transmits because yes they're very close together this one is resonant on 20 meters there's enough near field that you could put quite a bit of voltage in there which could create a problem for your transmitting now i have up here uh, in position one is my big ir okay that's the vertical out there and position 3 F is the hex beam okay so I will either connect one or the other with this switch to the radio now do they affect each other's pattern a little tiny bit is it enough to worry about no uh, I wouldn't worry about it either now if I had the um, hex beam connected to a different radio over here so that when I transmit it on this one on 20 and this one is on 20 yeah you could cause some problems with the front end the normal use case is that you're connected to one antenna at a time either via switch or via uh, moving uh, connectors uh, jumpers around to that so how close can you put them in your backyard well I'd try and get 20 feet 30 feet away from them um, just to keep the guys from getting tangled up and and stuff like that um, the uh, this loop up here is going to want to rotate uh, you've got to have a rotator in here I've got a little high gain rotator right there to turn this thing to put the beam where I want it. You don't want that to have any way of getting tangled up in this over here because if this is taller than your mast, um, I have 20 foot mast here. The actual, um, let's see, big IR, step IR, big IR is 33 feet tall and the mast for this is only 20 feet tall. So they need to be far enough apart that no combination of wind or bending or anything like that is going to cause the two to uh, run into each other. So, how close can you place them? I would put them apart for mechanical convenience so that you don't get the two interfering with each other. Otherwise, uh, as long as you're operating with like a switch to your, so that you've got one radio using either one antenna for both transmit and receive or the other antenna for both transmit and receive you'll not have a problem okay you'll only have the problem in the special cases I talked about where you're using multiple radios like for example connecting the vertical to a software defined radio okay because the software defined radio then the front end is just gonna get blasted uh, by that beam. I'd use a different antenna for that. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, Bob, I hope that was uh, useful. To those of you who have watched this far, I'd like to suggest that you go ahead and subscribe. Um, and subscribing uh, not only feeds the algorithm for YouTube, but uh, it also tells YouTube that you've put your vote of confidence in this channel and that other people might like to look at this too. Also, if you would like to help support this channel financially, you certainly may by going to dkassler.com support that shows several different ways to support this channel and you may find one that you like. Until we next meet, 73.